This next topic is lifespan shortening. This is, um, you have an average life expectancy and radiation exposure can decrease that life expectancy. Dying earlier than you otherwise would have died is, called, is considered a late effect because it happens at the end, right? Um, okay, so some historical context. Prior to us, uh, so in, in the 1950s, we developed really good radiation safety guidelines. We, we sort of had had these guidelines in the works for decades, but in the 50s, uh, we developed really good guidelines and we sort of, we put them into writing and, um, and, and we started to use these guidelines. Prior to that though, um, it was really, you know, it's hard to say. We don't, we developed, or sorry, we discovered uh, man-made radiation in 1895, started using it heavily in 1896, didn't even have our first radiation death until 1904, right? Clarence Daly, Thomas Edison's assistant. So it's, it's going to take decades before people start to realize that the radiation they were exposing themselves to in those early days was causing doctors to die early, okay? By the 1930s, 35 years or, you know, in that 30-ish year time frame after discovering x-rays, You've now had radiologists who, you know, were young, young people during, you know, when x-rays got invented, they started to use the x-rays, there were doctors who started to use x-rays and, and we, they called themselves radiologists, right? By the 1930s, they're getting to be old people now and then we're noticing that they are beginning to die earlier than other doctors, okay? Radiologists were exposing themselves to high levels of radiation during their careers. And by the 30s, we were noticing that they were dying earlier, and so somebody start, decided to chart, to, you know, to, to check this, and they noticed that the average lifespan for radiologists was a full five years less than other medical doctors, right? Other medical doctors who had similar life expectancies were living for five years longer than radiologists. So something was going on, right? Obviously, something that the radiologists were doing was causing them to live shorter lifespans, yeah? Um, and it was the fact that they were... Um, putting themselves around the primary x-ray beam, uh, around the x-ray tube, with, um, with minimal or no shielding for long amounts of time at short distances, which is the exact opposite of maximize your distance, maximize your shielding, and minimize your time, right? It's why we now have the ideas of, of, of time, distance, and shielding, because early radiologists were not doing that. By the 1960s, so after the 50s, we got our, our guidelines locked down. We haven't changed them since the 50s. So by the 60s, no difference at all was demonstrated. And at current levels of occupational exposure, there is no evidence that life expectancy for either radiologists or radiographers is any shorter than for any other healthcare worker or any other um, uh, equivalently risky job, right? No lifespan shortening was observed in studies of atomic bomb survivors or of radiographers during World War II, primarily because these atomic bomb survivors all developed, uh, they were getting acute doses, so they developed effects, but these were all early effects of radiation, and if they survived those early effects, then they just got to live their normal lives. Um, so uh, these lifespan shortenings are associated with um, long-term low levels of exposure, so chronic exposure to radiation for your career. That's associated with lifespan shortening. This is, go ahead. But we don't know if they, if they didn't include the effects on children in their studies. Sure. Then, then we don't really have solid information on that because those would be the ones as if they were before puberty. Sure. They were still developing. Sure. Problems. Sure. But yeah, that's a good point. We're not saying who these atomic bomb survivors were. We're not saying if this is taken from the adult population or the whole population as a whole or from, I bet you it's not from children, right? But I bet you it's, I bet you it's more like population as a whole in which children sort of get averaged into the mix, right? You don't see the effect directly on the children. But I bet you if you isolated the child data from that, if whatever data there was, if you isolate the child data, I bet you it would show um, um, something interesting, yeah. By the way, Nikola Tesla was the first one to realize that Radiation caused his burn. He was yeah, himself he, he got a burn on his hand. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so even, even, even Rankin didn't didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. But like, um, Alex, if you got patients who have multiple breaks and like you know evil, evil guys. Yeah, yeah. 
So those guys are probably, you know, they're getting exposed a lot more than one person who only has one brain sure. in body. So they would probably get it as well. They are, um, I mean, so, so what we mean by chronic exposure is every day for, you know, decades, right? That, that's, that's why the radiologists were dying and not the patients, right? Um, uh, the radiologists were dying because they were around the primary beam, all, you know, eight hours a day, every day for 30 years, you know. No, no aprons, no shielding. Um, the early x-ray tubes didn't even have lead, lead, lead uh, housing, right? They were just a, it looked like a light bulb, right? Just, it just turned on, right? And uh, there was a fluorescent screen between the patient and the doctor. So there's like the x-ray x -ray machine here, patient here, or uh, uh, yeah, patient here, fluorescent screen on, on this side. And the radiologist sits on the opposite side of the fluorescent screen in the dark room and views the screen as the patient moves around. I mean, they're right there, you know, uh, they're not, they're not, they're no distance away. There was um, also no filtration on the early x-ray tubes. We talked about filtration, right? There's no filtration on the early x-ray tubes. So you're getting all the low, low energy uh, rays, which otherwise they absorbed into the body. Um, so just for a number of reasons, early radiography was dangerous. And so early radiologists, um, there were no radiographers yet, but early radiologists were, were dying early. Okay. So let's, let's think about some things. We say it is generally accepted that some degree of lifespan shortening occurs with cumulative exposure. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. She'll appreciate that. There was two, two, cards. two cards. You don't have to sign both of them. That was just in case. I think we fit it all in one. Okay, cool. That's perfect. Yep. So yeah, just in case you, it was not enough room. Yeah, that's perfect. Good. <clears throat> So, um, but it should be, it should uh, be interesting to you that um, anything that you do, every time you walk out of your house, every time you set foot out of bed, there's a associated risk with doing it, right? Every possible thing that you can do, aside from just standing still, probably even has a risk there, everything that you do has a risk associated with it. And um, smart people can take that risk and turn that into how much lifespan shortening is expected if you take on that risk, right? For example, we know that smoking cigarettes is dangerous, right? If you smoke cigarettes for your whole life, then you are likely to have a shorter lifespan than if you don't smoke cigarettes. So smart people can, can quantify that. They can say, for each cigarette you smoke, here's how many minutes or days or weeks of life you're likely to use, lose, right? And we can say that for literally anything that we do. So jobs are a risk. Going to work is a risk, right? So it's estimated that the lifetime, uh, that, that, that for radiation workers, right, it's estimated you will live about 12 days shorter than, um, than, a, than other, other, other jobs, right? However, you are likely to lose 74 days of, of your life 74 days so for the relative risk of occupational accidents it's on it you on average will live 74 days shorter so just occupational accidents are more of a risk to loss of to shortening lifespan than being a radiographer is okay so just working in general puts you at risk if you have a job you do work you are at risk for an occupational accident and on average you'll live about 74 days less than you would if you did not have a job it didn't have to work, something like that. 435 days shorter for accidents in general. That's a little more than a year, okay? You are likely to live uh, one year-ish shorter um, because accidents happen, okay? So if there were no such thing as, we don't mean car accidents, we mean just accidents in general. If there were no accidents happening, right? No random accidents, then you, everyone would live for about a year longer, a little more than a year longer than they normally do, okay? Again, everything you can do is associated with a risk. We can quantify that risk into number of days lost. Lifespan shortening does not likely exceed one, one day per 10 milligrays. So you can add up your lifetime dose, right? See what it is, um, divide by 10 milligray and see how many days you, you're gonna live shorter than you if you hadn't decided to be a radiographer, right? But we're talking about days, right? You're not gonna notice 12 days of difference in, in lifespan, right? I live to 100 years or I live to 100 years in 12 days, right? It's not going to make a big difference. That's the idea. There are other much riskier jobs too. You know, being a firefighter, uh, being a police officer, working, you know, being in the military, those are much riskier things with 
higher, a bigger associated lifespan shortenings, right? Okay, uh, and by the way, this is the average cumulative lifetime exposure for radiographers. Um, this is interesting because this implies something between 15 and 20 days, where they're stating the average is roughly 12 days. Ten, one day per 10 milligray, 150 milligrays implies 15 days less, okay? Um, but that's, that's the average exposure, uh, average lifetime exposure. Okay. I think this is one of my, one of my favorite, um, my, one of my favorite things that I, that, I, that I look at, right? This table estimates loss of life expectancy due to various causes, okay? Things that are risky. Everything on here has it causes you to have an estimated you know loss of days of your life. All right, so look at the very bottom one on the screen. We'll get back to the top ones. Look at the very bottom one on the screen. Medical X-rays. Right, if you never have a medical X-ray in your life, then you are likely to live six days longer than the people who do get medical X-rays. And on average, one in two people gets a medical X-ray. Okay. <laughs> this is yeah. This is receiving medical lectures as a patient. No, that's not the tech. No, not the tech. Why is this you lose. You lose. This is just if you drink alcohol. Uh, on, if you drink the average amount, right? Whatever the average amount is. All right. Let's go up to the interesting ones because you guys are clearly keying in on the interesting ones. What's the most risky thing on the graph? Being unmarried, being unmarried and being a male, right? <laughs> Somebody plug this into their phone. Take take 3,500 and divide by 365. 3,500 and divide it by 365. That'll tell you number and it'll tell you years. Uh, 9.5 years? Yes, almost 10 years shorter of lifespans if you stay unmarried and happen to be a male. You know I'll tell you why. I know exactly why. Uh, yeah. Because men make dumb decisions. And, and when. And, and, oh, no, no, it's true. It's true. But look at. No, not dumb. Let me rephrase that. But look at unmarried female is on there too. So the fact that you are unmarried, if you stay unmarried, it, it makes you at, at higher risk for doing riskier things, right? Think about what you do when you get married, right? What did we literally say? You get married and then you do what? Die. You die. But, <laughs> but you, you get married and then you settle down, right? That's what you do when you get married, right? You settle down, you have kids. There you go. So four years. <laughs> it's not. It's not easy. I've seen people do it though. I'm like, how do you do it? You think it would blow ash right in your face? So yeah, the two riskiest things are being unmarried and, and smoking cigarettes. Notice this is this is cigarette smoking male. Look at there's a difference in male versus female. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Um, there's there's a difference here. I don't know why there's a difference. Um, maybe the average amount smoked by males is higher. Right, that would explain it. But biologically, we have to, we're, the, we're very similar, right? There's right. no major difference between our, our organ systems, male or female, right? So, but there you, there you are. Um, <laughs> dangerous jobs, think of police, fire, things like that, right? They lose on average 300 days of life expectancy doing those jobs. That's about a year, right? A little, it's two months short of a year, 10 months, right? So they lose on average, uh, you know, 10 months of their life just because they, they're gonna live 10 months less because they do some dangerous job. Um, here's our radiation workers. Now they're estimating, this is a study from the 1970s, and they were estimating it in, in the range of about a month, 40 days. Okay. We're estimating it now about 12 days or so. Yeah, this list is also generational. So. Right, right. So, um, but it affects like, everything, like even your insurance, you pay more if you're a, an unmarried yes. male or an yes. unmarried person. Yeah. And this, this is likely where they're pulling this stuff from. Yeah. yeah. Relatives. I had all this, the, all the, all the older <laughs> relatives 
smoke. So the men smoke and the women smoke. The women live longer. The well, the men were grumpier and better, <laughs> um, and died sooner. Yeah. But the women died with different versions. Of cancer. Yes. But yes. Except one of them, she was too mean. To it's die. interesting, right? Though she that there that there's. But there's like a, a, a regular correlation between things that you do and, and shortening of your lifespan, right? Everything that you do uh, puts you at risk, and it, it's, it's really, it's, it's your choice, right? Which, what you want to do, everything that you do has a risk, and um, you can assume more or less risk. Let's look at this one. This one is loss of life, loss of life expectancy in minutes, not days, okay? So buying a small car, 7,000 minutes of loss of life expectancy if you buy a small car versus buying a large car. Yeah, and this is studies from the 70s, so we're talking about like, you know, pretty root, pretty, pretty root, yeah, all right. But pretty, but, but pretty rudimentary safety stuff, yeah. So it's like buying a car that is small or the process it takes to buy a Oh, that's a good question. Is this, is, this is driving, owning and driving a small vehicle. Okay. Yeah, uh, versus like owning, so owning and driving a, you know, Fiat versus owning and driving a Suburban. You it's know. 11 days. It's, yeah. 7,000 minutes. Is 11, 11 days. Not, not that much, right? Not that I know of. Um, you can you can look into it, but this one, this is from uh, 1979. What if they were using Ford Pinto or something for the Right, what if Ford Pinto? Yeah, that would be that would be right about the right time, I think. Um, okay, let's look at a couple other ones of these. Uh, you're estimated to lose four tenths of a minute every time you cross the street. <laughs> Again, it's a, you have a risk, right? You get risk getting hit by a car, right? Some people that get cross the street get hit by cars, and that and then their lives get shortened, right? And then we average so, that out. If you were just to sit at home, mm -hmm. you thought about it. Wait, how did I say that? He's like, okay, if you don't do anything, you don't lose days. But if you're unhealthy, you have to go to the gym. Right. Store, so you're, but not doing anything, being sedentary, is its own risk. So there's literally no way to avoid risk. There's, yeah, I looked at the medical state of the and it was like, the, 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 the curve is steeper and more drastic because you start like after a week in bed you start yeah. developing you get you get you get atrophy of your organs right sores skin sores <clears throat> uh, suppressed immune system because so you're in bed Two weeks in bed, and you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, I mean, you like, can you can look like up. Like, I, I'm sure you could you look up relative risk of spending time in bed, right? You could die within a month. Okay, so there you go. So, yeah. Yeah, much shorter. You better get your foot out of bed. <laughs> look at the diet. Look at the diet versus non-diet soft drinks. It is a hundred times more risky to drink a non-diet soft drink than a diet okay, soft drink. Yeah, you lose a hundred times more time, right? You go from 0.15 minutes for a diet soft drink to 15 minutes for non-diet. Quite literally, anything you can do puts you at risk for losing some life expectancy. Um, and then, again, these are just averages across a population. Well, let me key on to maybe one more. Um, Coast to coast flight, estimated loss of life in, in 100 minutes. What do you think that's from? Plane crashes? Not from plane crashes. Radiation. It's from radiation exposure due to high altitudes. You're at 35,000 feet when you're on those on those uh, those big the big airliners, and you're well above the atmosphere, to, uh, high enough above the atmosphere to get extra exposure. No, they do not. Um, they do not get tracked. The, who, so it's not the not the flight or the people not the uh, people who fly. It's like the flight attendants yeah, and the pilots who we're, we're worried about, right? They're doing it all the time. Yeah. Um, you can probably find information on them where they fall and what their what their expected exposures are, but they don't wear dosimeters, as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, what if that, that, that's another. So you don't have to wear a dosimeter if you receive at work less than 10% of the natural background. And our natural background is about 3.5 millirem per year. So if you receive 0.35 millirem or less per year, then you don't have to be monitored. So the flight attendants and pilots must receive less than that, that or less. Yeah. All right. Good. So th this is interesting, though, right? It shows you that uh, the point of this is it's. it's I like. I think everyone gets a kick out of the unmarried male part of it, but um, the point is is important. The point is important, though, right? The point is is that everything is risky, and um, being an X-ray tech is part of those. Part of those things, yeah. I've always that 75 years old, he rides a motorcycle, smokes cigarettes, and he's not married. 
and he drinks a lot. Man. See, that, that's and that's that's important, right? Because when you, if you plotted this for you know all people and what they do and when they die, some people are gonna do all the risky things and then live to you know a hundred, right? It's, it's it, that's gonna be some of them. But then on average, you're gonna find the, these numbers will pull true. With larger populations, these averages um, become more true. Okay. Okay, so there are there are lots of things you can do that are more risky than being a radiographer, right? There are things you can do that are less risky than being a radiographer, but we don't we are not high on the list of risky things because you know a lot of people worry about being a radiographer, worry about the radiation. We talk about all this radiation, and it's there, it's around us. But the way that we've um, the way that we've um, learned to be safe around the radiation has put us into a position of, of having a safe job, right? We have a safe job because of all of these controls, all of these time, distance, and shielding controls that we have. Okay, so that's good. Let's go ahead and, and move forward now. Um, I really, this is one of my favorite ones though, because uh, everyone gets a kick out of that. Um, let's take a look now at some um, other late effects. This late effect is interesting because this is one, uh, the only late effect that I will discuss that has a threshold. Remember, late effects don't have a threshold, okay? But this one does. Cataract of the eye, of the lens of the eye, has a threshold dose of 2 gray for a single exposure and 10 gray if fractionated. What's fractionation? What do you think, Joshua? Yeah, so if I was going to give you 10 gray, but if I give you 10 gray right now, that kills you, right? If I fractionate it, what am I doing? So I cut it in half and give you 5 gray now, and then the rest next week? Would that count as fractionation? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. You chunked it up, right? You took 10 gray and you chunked it up. Now, 5 gray now, 5 gray next week, you're, you're, you're dead, right? But, um, but the point, so if I took 5 gray now and then... Um, you know, give you one gray per year for five years, what I said, so 10 years, what those 10 gray that I was talking about, right? Um, then you maybe you survive that, right? Okay, that's, but that's the, that's the point of uh, fractionation, okay? Now, remember, there's a difference between whole body exposure and partial body exposure, right? If you give somebody two gray to their whole body, the lens of the eye is part of the body, so that's included, that would cause cataract, but then they'd have all these other problems, right? We're talking about exposure to the lens of the eye, okay? So partial body exposure. Threshold dose of two gray for a single exposure. You're gonna be, have a hard time finding an, an environment where you can get two grays to the lens of your eye um, without doing something very, very wrong, right? Uh, but 10 grays over time is, is also still very hard, right? Your lifetime average as a radiographer on the high end is 200 milligray, okay? This is, uh, what is it, five times 10, 50 times more, right? Um, 50 times more than your lifetime average, okay? So you'd have to get 50 times the lifetime average that you would receive at work in order to get cataract of your eye. Okay, but guess who was getting 50 times the lifetime average early on? Early radiologists, so they were developing cataract of the eye. Interestingly, we call cataract of the eye a late effect, um, even though it has a threshold and it's associated with high levels of radiation, it's called a late effect because it has a latent period of 15 years. You might also see 10 to 15 years, so expect both of those numbers. Um, but 15 years, right? That means if you got 10 gray, sorry, if you got two gray to the lens of your eye today, okay, you're not gonna show cataract for 15 years or more. 15 years is about the average, okay? So um, that's important. So the, and if the exposure happens early in your life, it takes longer to manifest. If the exposure happens later in your life, the, the manifestation happens sooner. If exposures at old age, the latent periods become shorter and the cataracts become more severe. Cataract, by the way, is a clouding of the lens of the eye. Uh, we say things like hundreds of cases have occurred with nuclear physicists, um, and exposure for medical workers is far less. Um, anyone seen Oppenheimer? 
I have not. I need to go see it. Don't spoil it for me, but very good. It ha it's a Christopher Nolan movie. It's got to be it got to be fantastic. But uh, huh? It was so good. But uh, um. <laughs> but uh, but that that those are when we talk when we say nuclear physicists, we're talking about those guys. Okay. Um. And so so that's that's what we mean there. Um. Good. So and th those guys were experimenting with um. You know, nuclear materials with minimal to no shielding, you know, and, and receiving extremely high levels of extremely high let radiation, right? High linear energy transfer radiation, alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, where we're talking about x-rays. Those guys were dealing with the very high energy stuff and exposing themselves to quite, quite a lot of it. And so, um, yeah, uh, you know, then their eyes are always, you know, looking at the thing, so their eyes are always part of the exposure. So, yeah, documentation for them. Um, it was is an important data point. Uh, let's see. Eye protection in radiography is not necessary for routine radiography, but many workers in cardiovascular, interventional, fluoroscopy, um, who do these on a daily basis now regularly wear eye protection. We have glasses that have leaded lenses, like our control console has a leaded window. We just have glasses with leaded lenses. They look a lot like regular glasses, but the second you look through the lenses, you notice that just something's not right. It sort of bends the light in an interesting way. It's, it's lead, so it's a heavy material. They're clear, translucent, but you can tell pretty quickly that they're not regular glasses. You've got to look through them. Cancer risk. I've, I like to quote this number pretty regularly because uh, it reminds, it's a, it's a, sobering reminder about how likely it is for something bad to happen in your life. 33% um, likelihood of developing cancer sometime in your life. Now we don't mean 33% likelihood of dying from cancer. We mean 33% likelihood of developing some form of cancerous process in your lifetime. That's already there. Okay, without any extra radiation exposure, this is because of random mutation um, and activation of oncogenes in your DNA we have a one in three likelihood of developing cancer. It's estimated that for every 100 milligray total body exposure, the cancer risk increases by about 1%. You can get 100 milligray occupationally, right? Your average occupational uh, life for your lifetime as a radiographer is between 100 and 200 milligray, okay? Let's assume you got 200 milligray and, and your whole life as a radiographer. Your cancer risk goes from 33% to 35%, okay? 2% increase, right? Minor increase, but an increase nonetheless, right? Turned off. Ah, I know, my screen started to act weird. It was a key to me that something was wrong here. 